Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. I see so many familiar faces in chat. I see Jacqueline, uh, Jennifer, Valder, Tunk, Ralph, Tim, Sam, Edward, Dick, uh, RB, Tanya, uh, Nithish, Robert. Thank you guys so much for joining me this morning. Uh, my name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host again this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I'm super pumped to jump into today's challenge. It is one of my most favorite uh, for this round of challenges that I have put together for you but before i jump into the challenge i'd like to show you guys how you can get involved with the challenge how you can participate with me how you can share your entries um, with the community and also how you can get a hand uh, get a hold of uh, an authentic awesome voodoo val uh, adobe live meme uh, because why not right uh, okay so if you folks head over to behance.net slash challenge slash photoshop it will take you to this awesome page and basically what this page is is it's a little landing area where you can show up and you can have a little uh, one through four step on how to get involved with me um, every morning we release a challenge around 8 a.m pacific time um, and you can see challenge number four uh, is unlocked this morning. We have done a layers challenge where we created a cool promotional flyer for a fantasy uh, farming RPG farmer's market, uh, which was fun. Uh, we used uh, the color tools in Lightroom uh, and we used a little bit of Photoshop to create an awesome promo where we used an image uh, of some farmland and changed the seasons, uh, so to speak, with the colors. Uh, we took uh, some fall images and made it look like it was in uh, winter and spring and summer um, and it was it was a lot of fun uh, then we used filters yesterday uh, to do kind of a pixel sorting effect where we uh, took an image uh, and we added some awesome distortion filters to it to make it look like pouring pixels we added some gradient maps to that to make it look like water and then made it look like those pixels were pouring water over some crops <clears throat> and today is the brushes challenge uh, and it says, illustrate a character or creature using brushes. Get started using the line work in the starter file. You can get that starter file by hitting this get started button right here. Um, you can also hit the get started button over here on the filters if you want a fabulous picture of me wearing um, an old lady's wig and carrying a small Kylo Ren minifigure. Um, just for science, just in case you wanted it. Uh, uh, we, If I jump over into the Discord... Um, I actually posted, um, some pretty crazy, uh, images yesterday, not only my challenge entry, um, but I also posted this absolute nightmare fuel picture of my face after I did the pixel sorting effect on it, and I thought maybe you guys would just like to have that for no other reason other than, um, maybe you want to scare your friends, maybe you just want to remember... <laughs> Maybe you just want to remember the hardships of the beginning stages of Photoshop projects and the fact that they can turn into something that looks nothing like what you began with because uh, by the time I was done with my pixel sorting project, I had a look this is the this is the original picture um, with some cool effects on it uh, posted by um, graphic Alicia. so you guys will will get this image with the previous challenge if you weren't here. Um, but let me see if I can scroll on through. This is my uh, my end challenge entry where I took some of that pixel sorting. I, I applied that gradient map and made it look like pouring water. Um, not nightmare fuel. No nightmare fuel to be seen or had here in this image, and yet it was absolutely terrifying while we were working um, on the, on this challenge at the beginning. Uh, but we've got a lot of really fabulous uh, entries that have come through since then. I'm so proud of you guys. Really, I am. Uh, I know that things can be pretty tough right now with everybody working from home and with the whole social distancing and a lot of people in uh, quarantine and stay at home. Uh, orders right now. Uh, and I think you guys have just really uh, showed up to Behance um, and given these challenges your all. So I commemorate you all for your hard work and I hope that you will join me again today for the brushes challenge. Uh, now, if you download the starter file, uh, this is what you will get. Also, actually, let me give you guys the, the URL for the Discord first. Um, so if you go to this uh, this URL up here, bit.ly slash PS Discord, making sure that P and that S are capitalized, you will uh, be brought to the Discord where you can uh, check out my work, check out the work of your peers, and give each other feedback. Um, let me jump back over here. 
Uh, but yeah, if you if you would like to um, get uh, involved with me today uh, and do this challenge, this is the starter file that is available to you for this challenge. And again, it says illustrator character or creature using brushes. Get started using the line work in the starter file. Now, uh, all of these challenges that I am doing are fantasy RPG, like farming RPG themed. RPG standing for role playing game. If you folks are fans of Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon. This is the challenge for you. Uh, if you are not a gamer and you're not really interested in that sort of thing, feel free to interpret these challenges however you like. You do not have to follow that theme. Uh, you can actually do the challenges and use them for your own personal uh, projects. I actually have a really great example of that. Uh, there is a wonderful designer uh, in the Discord who has been sharing um, their work. If I can scroll through and find that entry real quick. Uh, they have a, a pretty cool... Uh, pretty cool band. It looks like a, a rock band um, they're in. Uh, and they've actually been using these challenges to design promos and things for their challenge. This is from uh, Annie Stoic. Uh, and they're from Jackknife Stiletto, and I've noticed they've been posting uh, some really cool challenge entries just doing um, promos for themselves, for their own personal projects, and that's totally okay. It's even okay if you start these challenges out and it ends up turning into a totally different project. These are just uh, challenge guidelines to kind of get those creative juices flowing, to get you sitting down each day and designing something um, along with your peers, and that's super cool. Uh, but for this brush challenge, what I'm going to do is I have created uh, an image for you. I've drawn a picture of uh, an animal that you would you would maybe see on a farm. Um, so the RPG theme for today is we are illustrating something uh, that you uh, would you might protect your farm from, or maybe a little helper, a little farmhand helper for your fantasy um, role playing game farm. Um, so I have chosen to illustrate a crow uh, or a raven, whichever you prefer. Um, and you folks can illustrate something of your own. Maybe you have little monsters on your farm. Maybe you have little slime creatures on your farm. Maybe you uh, have uh, caterpillars on your farm. Maybe you have little ladybugs. Uh, whatever you want to illustrate, go for it. Or you can use the image that I have provided for you. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through how I actually color in an illustration. Now, I have done some cool uh, illustration challenges for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge today. Uh, but in those challenges I'm more focused on how to actually create the illustration. Today what I'd like to talk to you about is exactly how and why I choose to put certain colors in value and values where I put them so that you can translate that knowledge to any other project that you might be working on um, in the future that's completely unrelated to this. So I'm going to use my stylus for today but remember if you don't have a stylus uh, you can actually come over here and edit the brush settings so that if you're using a mouse or a trackpad, you can still get those clean, smooth strokes with your brush tool. Uh, so if I hit B on my keyboard to switch over to my brush, I'm going to change my brush size uh, with my bracket keys, my left and right bracket keys, and I'm going to zoom in to my image after hiding these text layers. Um, with control plus and minus. Uh, I might even select my crow layer, hit control T and bump this up to the center of my uh, of my canvas here. Um, now, uh, whenever I, if I make a new layer, let's say control shift in to make a new layer, whenever I go ahead to paint um, with my stylus, I, I get some pretty clean strokes here. Um, but if you're using a mouse, like I said, I'm going to switch to my mouse briefly here. Um, if I crank this smoothing up, uh, you can do it to your, your heart's content, your heart's desire, whatever you think is right for you. And I go in here and do this, I actually get some pretty smooth strokes just with my just with my brush. Um, instead of if I if I crank this smoothing all the way down, you can see that I, I get kind of a, a not so uh, smooth line. It's kind of jaggedy. It's kind of not really that nice, but cranking that smoothing up really, really helps uh, to simulate uh, using a stylus or using a pen or a brush, which is really cool. So I'm going to change this back down to about a 10 and I'm going to switch back to my stylus for my challenge. And I'm going to show you guys how I colored this in. Um, so first of all, what I want to do is I want to put in a base color uh, to this illustration. Um, and this uh, uh, illustration, actually, I've made sure to close all of the lines. So if I come over here to my 
uh, magic wand tool. If you don't see your magic wand tool, all you have to do is right click either your quick selection tool or your object selection tool because it will be in that little folder there for you. And I'm going to select the uh, empty space around my crow here. And you'll see that it actually selects all this white space around the border of my crow. I'm going to right click. I'm gonna say uh, select inverse, and it will only select uh, the inverse of that, which is just the border around the crow. I'm gonna come over here to my paint bucket tool. If you don't see your paint bucket tool, all you have to do is right click your gradient tool or your 3D material drop tool, because it will be in that folder. And I'm gonna come over here and select uh, kind of a purpley gray color, like a darker purpley gray. Um, and on my, uh, my fresh layer here, I'm gonna paint bucket just a base color in there, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer, Control Shift N. I'm gonna say Control D to deselect my selection there. And you can see that actually looks pretty good. Uh, my, my brush has some texture, so you can see there might be a little bit of artifacts of texture here. All I'd have to do is hit E on my keyboard for my eraser, and I could come in and, uh, and clean this up. Uh, on the proper layer, of course, um, and uh, it looks pretty darn good. Um, on this new layer, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a clipping mask. So a clipping mask, as I've said in the past, um, is basically a layer that only um, everything you put on that layer adheres to what is on the layer just below it, um, or what is on the layer just below all of the clipping mask layers pointing down. Um, and this is great for illustration because if I grab kind of a wacky color here, and I paint, you can see it goes out of the lines, it goes all over the place, but I only wanna paint inside of my base shape here. Um, so if I right click and say create clipping mask, you can see it only goes to the borders of that layer underneath it. And that is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna undo all that, re-add that clipping mask. I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna sample that purple color. Uh, and I'm going to grab a color that is darker than uh, my purple color here. Uh, and you can make this color a little more saturated and darker um, if you like. Um, it's really up to you and what you're doing for your project. I, I like to make my darks a little more saturated. So I, I click over here to the uh, right um, of the canvas uh, from where my previous color was um, to make sure that it's darker and it's um, further along on the saturation spectrum. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to imagine the light source for this project is, uh, in fact, I can make a new layer just for this. Um, I'm gonna imagine the light source is kind of over here um, and in front of my, uh, my subject here. So if, if that is true and the light is shining this way, um, then my shadows are going to be underneath my bird here, um, and uh, not as um, not as prominent. So if the if the the shadows were directly above, I might have tons of shadows all the way out to here. Um, but because it is forward a little bit, I'm actually going to only put a very thin layer. Um, of shadows underneath here. Now you can do this a lot of ways. If you really don't like the brush tool, it's really not for you, um, then you could actually use uh, maybe the lasso tool or a shape tool and add shapes uh, in the shape of your shadows here. Um, but I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna place um, some shadows underneath all of these little parts that I have drawn. Um, and try to imagine this crow in a 3D space, so to speak. Uh, and I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna add some darker colors underneath um, these little uh, rings of feathers around the neck here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is something that I, I quite like when it comes to kind of stylizing uh, an illustration is even though I have my, uh, my little shape uh, here uh, for my shadows, I'm also going to come through and I'm gonna do these little lines like so um, Just to kind of bring that shadow out without bringing it extending it all the way to the center of the uh, of, of the, the focal point my subject here um, So I might even actually put it a little bit of shadow underneath the eye here things where the light uh, source would not actually hit um, and I think that that is good for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Now I'm gonna make a new layer, Control Shift N. I'm also going to right click this and set it to create clipping mask. And because I have all of these 
uh, all the layers underneath it also set to a clipping mask of this layer, this base color layer. Um, this clipping mask will also adhere to this layer, uh, and it will do that until I have a regular non-clipping mask layer between it and the other clipping masks. So I can show you an example. Um, if I come in here and I start uh, illustrating, you can see that it will still adhere there. However, if I were to make a new layer here and uh, release that clipping mask, because that layer there is normal, uh, it would not, uh, it, it would take the clipping mask off of this. If there was something uh, on this new layer, and then I made this a clipping mask all over again with that layer in between, it would only adhere to that layer there. So uh, if you are using clipping masks and you're finding you're having a bit of trouble um, with things not really working the way that you had planned, make sure that you do have um, a straight line, a straight cohesive uh, set of clipping masks adhering to the proper layer you have chosen. Uh, now, I am going to select this mid color here again. And I'm going to select a, uh, a lighter color here, and then I'm gonna place some lighter values where I believe the light would be hitting the subject. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing here um, on the top of the feathers of the eye. Uh, I'm gonna do some um, underneath uh, on this part that I believe would be sticking out from the eye socket there. Uh, and I'm also going to come around and I'm gonna start placing uh, some strokes of color uh, on the feathers of the face. And again, I'm doing that same thing where I am kind of coloring in, um, but I'm also dragging this out with little hatch marks to make things, uh, to give things a little bit more depth, if that makes sense. Boom. And this can be used, this knowledge can be used uh, even if you are like a graphic designer. Maybe you're making some icons and you're thinking about adding a little bit of color uh, to your design. Um, you can totally choose, I would say a good starting point would be three base colors and use them as your um, your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. Uh, and if you decide that you want to get a little crazier and add another color, that is totally cool. Um, it is up to you. I actually am going to add an extra color to this uh, illustration today. Um, but it's really up to you what you choose. I think I'm only going to dab just a little bit of color um, on this underneath here. Maybe I'll I'll place some some light right there. Maybe I will place some uh, some light here maybe down on these feathers like so, um, and just really adding um, uh, some depth to this. Now, if you also want, you can come in with some harsher uh, contrasting values like a straight white or a straight black. Um, I can make a new layer. I'm gonna also put this on a clipping mask. I'm going to hold alt and sample white, and I'm just gonna fill in the eye um, with some white here, because I want that to be white. Um, and then I'm going to sample some black uh, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do something really cool here um, because I want this beak to look like it's black, but I, what I don't wanna do is color the entire beak in black. Now that could work, but since I'm doing a fairly stylized kind of crow and because my lines are black and I'd like to keep them that way, I don't really want to color the entire beak black because I wanna keep the detail that I have illustrated with the curve of the beak opening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on this beak and I'm actually going to trace around the shape of my beak here, like so. Just to have like a little dark portion right there. And then I'm going to kind of do this hatching um, look similar to what I did for the rest uh, of the illustration and just have little tiny portions um, of it uh, see-through, if you will. Um, just to make it look like it's a shiny black beak without coloring the entire thing in black. Maybe I will erase, I've pressed E on my keyboard to erase a little bit, um, and I will bring this in like so, and maybe I'll color in a little portion like that, boom. Um, and then what I can do is I can grab my white again, and maybe I will put some little shine marks um, here on my beak, um, just to make it look like it is shiny. Uh, and then the last thing I'd like to add, I'm making a new layer, also adding a clipping mask onto that. 
uh, is I'm going to grab some green because I'm going to make it look like this crow has stolen a little sprout from my garden. Uh, so I'm going to click over here in my little color uh, picker over here. I'm going to grab a kind of a dark green color um, and I am going to color in this whole sprout green. And I did use, I did also shade this in my previous step, so I might actually use a blending mode, um, like uh, darken, so that you can still see the difference in values. I'll make a new layer, add a clipping mask yet again, sample this color, and grab a lighter color, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add some light values to um, my sprout, like so. Boom. Uh, so then it just looks like I have a little uh, crow with a sprout in his mouth. Um, and I think that actually looks pretty darn cool. Um, and this is uh, uh, some cool tips that you can use if you're an illustrator. Uh, like I said, also, if you're just making icons, you're maybe you're doing a more clean, minimalistic style um, just to help you kind of visualize where you ought to put those shadows, where you ought to put those highlights, um, and how I go about selecting colors. You can also go to Adobe, Adobe Color um, for this and select a color palette that you like. If you're a little too um, shy or maybe new to selecting colors, that's totally fine as well. Um, and then what you can do also is you can start adding some background textures to this. I don't have time to show you all the steps of adding textures uh, to this uh, illustration since I do have a limited amount of time, but I can Martha Stewart you real quick and show you um, some textures that I have added already. So this is my uh, test file that I did. You can see I also went around and added um, some of those darker values into um, the eye so that it's not completely white in the eye. Um, I have added um, some more uh, kind of highlights to the beak there. Um, and what I did is I got some, some textures, I believe these were from True Grit Texture Co. Um, and I put some textures behind my uh, my subject here, as you can see in my layers. Um, and then I also overlaid um, some textures uh, into my um, my subject as well to give everything a texture. Um, and then I'm using actually the same font down here as I used for our very first challenge, um, which was, if I select T over here, um, it was Brayton Composer, um, which was the, the font that I used there, just to give this guy a little title. Um, his name is just Crow for now. You folks can feel free to name the crow whatever you want, but it just kind of makes kind of a nice little graphic um, uh, as far as presentation goes. Um, but I cannot wait to see what sort of things you folks create, if you guys illustrate your own or how you color in the illustration that I have made for you. Um, and when you're done, I hope that you will come over to Discord um, and hit this little circular button here to upload your image so that everyone can see what you do. Um, I really appreciate you all joining me for this challenge. Uh, as I said, I can't wait to see what you folks come up with. Uh, please stay tuned uh, for the rest of the day because I am not the only stream on today. There are going to be other um, awesome segments for you folks uh, to to watch during your uh, your home quarantine or your your stay at home orders today. Um, and I hope you guys have fun designing. Uh, so happy happy Friday, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Adios, everyone.